What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is Eric and today we are going to continue the Matrix review series. We are getting ready for Matrix Resurrections which is only hours away from being released in my theater. It has already been released in many others and I see some YouTube videos starting to pop up and I'm seeing those thumbnails and those titles and it is not looking good at all. I am really concerned at this point. Very, very concerned about this new movie. I mean, what am I going to do if it sucks? I'm going to go on a rant and then move on with my life. But I'm still very concerned because I really want this movie to be good. I really was worried from the moment that it was announced. Even made a video on that a couple of years ago. And we're going to find out, you know, once this movie comes out, if it's any good or not, at least in my opinion, I know it's getting good reviews, but even those good reviews are concerning because they're not sounding like real true movie fans, if you know what I mean. So I'm really concerned about this movie, but hey, maybe I'll love it. Maybe I'll really like it at least. Maybe I'll have a lot of fun with it because to be honest, I enjoy the sequels. Matrix Reloaded, which we'll start with today, is a movie that a lot of people say it stinks. It sucks. It's trash fire, garbage, and I don't see that. I just don't. Is it as good as The Matrix? Of course not. It's a sequel. Most sequels are not as good. Okay, some are very rare exceptions. You got Terminator 2, you know, you have Aliens, which, you know, it's still, it's still an argument which one's better, you know, the original or the second, but there are a few, you know, sequels that are as good or better, but that's very rare. All I wanted was a movie that was, you know, continuing to build on the lore, continued to expand the universe within the Matrix, and, you know, bring back Neo, bring back all these main characters, Morpheus, of course, Trinity, and that's exactly what it did. And overall, it's a fun time, and I enjoy it. I can still watch it. I just watched it preparing for this, and I enjoyed it. Not to say it doesn't have flaws, which I'll get to, but overall, I thought it, it was a really fun movie. I think that Morpheus... In this one, we'll talk about Revolutions later, but in Reloaded, I think Morpheus is pretty damn awesome. He gives that awesome speech, and I thought he had a lot of big moments and big lines. I love his interactions with Locke, who, you know, is a guy who, you know, he's trying to defend Zion because Zion's about to be attacked by the machines, and, you know, he needs every man, woman, and child available, every ship available, every weapon available, every resource to defend Zion we need. But, you know, you have Morpheus, on the other hand, and he's saying, you know, sure, but at the same time, all the weapons in the world are not going to save Zion. It's all about Neo, the one, the Oracle. And a lot of people think, you know, including Locke, that this guy is out of his mind. Morpheus is crazy, okay? All that's a bunch of fairy tale BS. We need weapons. We need personnel. We need our ships. Every ship available. That's what Locke is saying. And I love that, you know, whole argument and everything that they're having. You know, Locke saying, no, I, I, not everyone believes you, okay, Morpheus? Morpheus saying, my beliefs do not require them to. And everything that happens, you know, outside of the Matrix in the real world, it's really exciting. You know that it's building to something huge in the next movie. There's going to be a massive attack and everything is getting prepared for it. But meanwhile, you have scenes from within the Matrix that are really awesome. Like when they go meet the Frenchman, when they go, uh, when you have Neo going to talk to the Oracle, everything there within the Matrix is really cool and is really interesting. The more, you know, parts of the matrix the more areas that they explore the more things that you know we see and learn about you know just it's just fun to me it's just interesting to watch and i i still enjoy it i like most of the new characters in this one not all of them but i like most of the new characters especially link and niobe i think they're both pretty awesome link is really fun really good character and you know so they expand you know upon the cast and most of them i like there are some annoying characters i'll get to that i don't appreciate so much but i think that overall um, it, it's, it's a decent movie. I love the, the introduction to the fact that, you know, Agent Smith is now actually penetrated the real world. We haven't really seen what's going to happen there yet, but it's a nice cliffhanger that the movie leaves upon where we have Bane, who is acting kind of weird and kind of uh, odd, but that's because he, uh, you know, he's normally just part of the crew, but now he's actually Agent Smith. So the actor who portrays Bane has to actually be Agent Smith. He does a really good job in the limited time that we see him. We know that I'm sure we're going to see more of that in Revolutions, which we do. And I thought that was a really interesting idea and a really cool way to leave it. And then right at the end, you know, towards the end of the movie where Neo actually starts to get some of his power outside of the Matrix. How is that possible? How is that possible? So even though, yeah, the, the movie's been called convoluted, there's enough that we understand 
and yeah, some of the the world building from within the matrix, you learn more the program this, program that. There's a lot to take in, but it's not like you have to understand every little thing. You know, as far as going to meet the architect, we've done this six times already. It was a cool scene. I enjoyed the scene with the architect, even though I didn't fully understand it. Took took multiple watches to try to you know what. Um, but it's not like impossible to get the overall gist of what's going on. You got machines that are about to ta attack Zion. They need to defend Zion in the real world. Meanwhile, you have Morpheus who says, you know, Neo is the one. He is the one who's going to save. He's the only one who can save Zion. He's the only one who can save humanity. And he talks to the Oracle. He learns that the only way he can do it is from the mainframe. He's got to go in there. He's got to get in there. And, um... You know right there with the machines in order to save everyone and we know it's building up to you know a, a big third act a big third movie hopefully that's what i'm hoping at the time i see right you know when you watch reloaded it looks like it's building up to something big in revolutions and it, it, it's a pretty decent second movie in a trilogy where oftentimes the second movie in the trilogy is just kind of a, a stepping stone movie and not much happens i think there's a lot of fun in this movie to be had it's not super long they didn't make it a two and a half hour, three hour movie. It was just, oh my God. Uh, it's not like that. It's, it's quick. It's an easy watch. And I, I think it's pretty fun. I also have to mention the just design, all the effects, all the, you know, it just went really big. And I really enjoyed a lot of the things that we were seeing. We got to look at some of the machinery they're going to use to defend Zion with the big ro robots you, you, uh, you kind of control. And uh, we just get a glimpse of some of that stuff. And what's cool is, you know, because they... I believe they filmed these back to back or, you know, pretty much wrote them together. But you see that they're connected nicely, reloaded and revolutions, whether you like them or not, at least they're they're seamless. I mean, they're connected. They're clearly written and you know, on the entire trilogy written by the same people. And that's really helps. It's not like the new Star Wars trilogy, which like it or love it. It's a complete mess. A complete mess. There was no roadmap, no plan, no nothing. And you see that a lot. Just complete messes when you have different people write the different movies. And sometimes even the same person writes them. You know, and they still are a complete mess, which is hard to explain. It's this movie and the next one, they go together nicely. Now, I don't know about this fourth one that's about to come out. But at least you can watch them seamlessly. You don't go like, what the hell? But the last movie said this and that and this and that. Now they're saying, I don't see that too much. It, it's pretty seamless. But that's not to say the movie's perfect at all. I think there are some characters like that kid who follows uh, Neo around is kind of annoying and he's supposed to be annoying. Like, even even Neo's like, oh God, he comes again. What the hell does this kid want? <laughs> Kids are kind of annoying, but hey, there's annoying people in life. Also, we knew the fact that, you know, at the end of the original movie, Neo was all powerful. Neo, like the, the agents were nothing to Neo. And I thought that was one of the cool things about it. But how are you going to continue? You have to, Neo has to be challenged some, somehow. So right off the bat, when, you know, the agents show up and start fighting, and we're like, okay, he's just going to take them out like this. Instead, he has to, has to fight them a little bit. And then he, go, and he and it's all explained with one word. And he goes, huh, upgrades. <laughs> and it's like, okay, so the agents have been upgraded. And I had to do something. They had to do something. And then in one scene, you know, which I find this scene to be, not my favorite, which is when, you know, Agent Smith, you know, there's 100, and then 200, then 500 Agent Smiths all attacking Neo, and Neo has to defend himself against all of them. And it's a pretty cool scene for a while, but then it gets really wonky because it starts to look like a straight up video game. After he pulls that pole or whatever out of the ground, you know, and uh, starts using that, and then it's full video game. And now, don't get me wrong, I mean, it's, it's impressive special effects for the time, but you shouldn't put it in a you know movie i'm sorry unless it's a really quick shot five second shot or something but they they overdid it to me and i'm saying it's good it's impressive it's good but it's looks like a video game it's good for a video game it's awesome for it would be an awesome video game It'd be the best video game ever but you put it in the movie we can tell it's fake it looks like a video game and i've always thought that since i first watched the movie and it just was too long you know i think the fight was nice grounded i mean ground enough as it can be with you know 50 smiths against one neo but they took it too far once they went hey, i know they want to do this like let's go let's do this let's let's push the envelope push the envelope push the envelope push the envelope and you know at first you know the envelope is awesome you're pushing that envelope but then it, you know the envelope uh no return to sender on that mother effort send it back i mean for some people it may not bother them but it takes me way out of the movie when all of a sudden Neo becomes a CGI video game and all the Smiths are video games. In fact, I don't think they even had to do that multiple agent thing, you know, agent Smith thing. I mean, 
I guess they did because it's part of the you know it's part of the writing for both Reloaded and Revolutions. But I think that if you just focused on the fact that you know you have Agent Smith that actually is able to penetrate himself into the real world, I thought that storyline was badass and awesome. But once you have him be able to repeat himself a million times, it's just, okay, it's kind of like a gimmick. And I don't know, I didn't love it too much. And, you know, the explanations in this movie are why he's back. You know, can't fully be explained. Even he's, you know, Smith's talking to Neo. Like, I cannot fully explain how this happened. But the point is, it did. So us as movie fans, like, oh, okay, so point is, it did. You know, can't be explained, but we just go with it. And they had to do that a lot. You know, they had to do that a lot because I don't think they, they didn't know they were going to have a sequel. They didn't know the Matrix was going to be as big a hit as it was, and once it was, they're like, "Okay, make sequels." So they had to they had to come up with something. And when you're on the spot, and you know you've written this amazing movie, you put all your heart and soul into it, you had all the time in the world to make it and to write it, and now they're like, "Boom, we need a sequel. Let's go!" You got to hurry and write it. All that considered, I, I think that they did a pretty good job. My final negative would be the romance though between Neo and Trinity in the first movie. The chemistry wasn't that great. You could kind of tell they liked each other a little bit, little googly eyes maybe, but ultimately it, it, it did not seem like they were like madly in love or anything. And in this one though, yeah, I, I don't see the chemistry there that much, but then they have the crazy, you know, the sex scene and everything that goes on and it's kind of it's kind of awkward to be honest. It's not it's not my favorite scene right there. I might forward through that. Um, but maybe that's a, a bit of a nitpick, but all in all, to be honest, I really enjoyed Matrix Reloaded. Uh, I think that obviously I have to respect other reviewers out there and everyone else's opinion. And it seems like most people say this movie stinks. The, 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 the sequels aren't as good. So, you know, this is just one person's opinion. And I, I happen to enjoy the, the sequels, but clearly not nearly as good as the original. A lot of new characters unnecessary, maybe. And it's a little bit more convoluted. And, you know, it's, it's not as simple. It's not an absolute masterpiece like the original at all. But... I find a lot of enjoyment in it. In fact, in my opinion, I'd say it's good and not great. That's just me though, Matrix Reloaded. I'm not even gonna say see it if you're bored. I would say definitely see it if you haven't, if you are a fan of the original. Check these out, man. They're not that bad, but you know, that's just me. So let me know what you guys think of Matrix Reloaded. I'm sure most of y'all have seen it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of Revolutions and you know, don't spoil me yet, please, for Resurrections. I haven't seen it yet. I'm looking forward to it by the time um, this video is up a lot of people have already have seen matrix Re uh, resurrections and i'm really looking forward to it but i'm very very worried so i would say good not great for matrix reloaded let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe button we'll talk to you very soon with matrix Revolu uh, revolutions see ya